Hello, hello and welcome to our 6 to 8 channel. This is a special chapter for my grade 7 students out here. We are going to be discussing a concept of the chapter physical and chemical changes. Now, this is a very exciting chapter because it's all about how real life works. I mean, all around you, when you look all around you, you're going to see a lot of these kind of changes happening. So today, welcome to our session. We're not doing the whole chapter. This is just a chota sa concept session of this particular chapter. Today, we're going to be dealing with physical changes and characteristics from your grade 7 chapter, which is physical and chemical changes, right? So before we proceed, let's take a look at what we're going to be covering today. So in short, first of all, we will be covering changes. What are changes exactly and how can we classify the different changes that happen around us? Then we will be talking about physical changes in particular and then we will be talking about the characteristics of physical changes. Now, it all sounds very heavy, heavy, but it's actually not. This is a very easy peasy chapter and we are going to do it in a very easy peasy way. So, are you ready? Okay, now let's first think of the word change. I mean, we keep using this word change all the time. Okay, change is the only constant. There are these huge quotations about it also. But change ka matlab kya hai? What exactly is change? Well, the definition of change, if we, you know, talk about the, the scientific definition of change, the scientific definition of change is exactly this. It says that a change is a process where uh, one or more properties of a substance get altered. So I read this for you again. A change is a process which alters one or more properties of a substance. Now, you don't need to bother too much about this. I'm going to explain this definition in detail so that you will understand exactly what we mean. But yes, definitely, if you get a question uh, in your exam to ask you, oh, what do you, uh, what is a change? Then this is what you will say. A change is a process which alters one or more properties of a substance. Now, when we're talking about changes, for example, what are some of the examples that we can talk about? Well, we see changes around us so often and in, in so many aspects of our life, like everything around us almost is all about change. For example, aap ek seb le lo. you take an apple and you've taken a full yummy apple and you say, ah, I don't feel like eating this whole apple. I don't feel like biting into it. Let me cut it. So you slice the apple. What has happened? The apple has changed from a full apple to a half apple or a, you know, different slices of an apple, right? That's change. Or for example, melting of butter. When you're cooking, you put that solid butter onto the frying pan and that psh, it just basically sizzles and becomes liquid butter. That's a change. Or for example, you know, beautiful seasons, right? When you have autumn, for example, in, in some countries or in some places in India also, we have autumn. And what do you see, uh, uh, you know, the, the trees basically change their color from green and they become this beautiful goldenish or um, yellowish, orangish color. All of these are changes, right? Which means that the way that it was before, it's not looking the same now or it is not that thing now, right? So something has changed from one particular situation to another particular situation, right? Okay, we will explain this a little bit more in detail. Right. So when we're talking about changes around us, that like I said, there are so many changes that happen around us. What I gave you earlier was just a few of them. But if we take a look at these, for example, there are so many melting of ice, which means you have solid ice, which is melting into liquid ice. You have uh, cooking, Are raw noodles or raw vegetables, which then become, you know, something completely yummy and tasty that you can eat. Something is changing, right? Some properties are changing over there. Or for example, stretching of a rubber band. It was first uh, normal like this, ta, 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 right? So it's changing. The form is changing. The, the shape is changing of that rubber band, right? Or for example, burning of paper. When you burn paper, it suddenly completely disappears. So what has happened over there? This is what we call a change, right? So a change is basically a process which alters one or more properties of a substance. This is something that you will have to remember. Okay? Now, let's talk about classification of changes. So first of all, when we talk about classification of changes, classification of changes can be done based on two factors. The first one that we are going to be talking about is reversibility. Okay, so reversibility, let me change the color of the pen over here for you. Okay, what is the meaning of reversibility? Reversibility basically means something that can be 
<laughs> reverse, which means you basically, you know, you go somewhere and then you reverse to back to what it is. So based on reversibility, we have two kinds of changes. One is reversible change and second is irreversible change right now what is the meaning of the word reversible change so very simply reversible change is a change that can be reversed can be undone so which means it's quite temporary so for example if we talk about folding of paper you have a paper with you and you say ah, i want to make a paper flower or i want to make a lovely paper boat i want to do some origami right and you take it you know fold it into different shapes and then you say ah now i'm bored i want to make another shape what do you do you'll unfold that paper right so basically when you change you know fold that paper you can get back that uh, paper to what it was before right so this is what we call a temporary change this is what we call a reversible change you can reverse it back to the same substance that you started with right or for example molding of clay now everyone has played with um clay right so sometimes you have these clay boxes with all these different different colored clays and you take you know you take that bar of clay over there and you say okay now i want to make this into a dia and you make it into a dia and then you say okay uh, now i don't want the dia shape anymore you can actually change it back to what it was right so this is what we mean by reversible change what is a reversible change a reversible change is one that can be reversed or undone and basically this is a temporary change just for a shorter time we're changing it but it will go back to what it is correct so reversible change next we move on to irreversible change now what is an irreversible change ulta hate the opposite of reversible change so irreversible change is basically something it's a change that cannot be undone cannot be reversed right so this would we would say is a permanent change which means that once you have made that change you can't go back to the way that it was before some things in life are irreversible, right? Okay, so for example, burning of paper. Like when we spoke about folding of paper, you folded that paper, then you unfolded it to what it was. That is reversible. But when you're talking about burning of paper and you say, chalo, you know what, I have a sheet of paper, let me go ahead and burn it. Can you get that paper back? No, you can't, which means that this change cannot be reversed. It cannot be undone. And this is why we say that this is an irreversible change. And this change is a permanent change. It is not something that is there only for a thoda sa, chota sa time, right? Okay, so burning of paper is one such change, which is an irreversible change. Or you have even slicing of the apple that I spoke to you about, right? So for example, oh, I don't want to eat this apple full. I think I will just cut it in and I'll, uh, you know, cut it into slices. Then you say, ah, you cut it into slices and you say, ah, now change my mind. I want to eat the whole apple. Can you get the whole apple back? No, you can stick it with fevicol, but it's still technically not the whole apple back. You can't eat it with that, right? So it's basically a, an irreversible change over here. You've changed the shape of that uh, apple. Or you've changed the size of that apple and this is a permanent change. So it is irreversible so the first classification of changes is based on reversibility and under reversibility you have two reversible changes and irreversible changes clear okay aage hai. now our next classification of changes is based on whether this change has created a new substance or a new product right so for example in this we have the first kind of change which is basically what we call physical change and then we have chemical changes and in fact this is what our entire chapter is all about what is a physical change physical change is one in which the physical properties of that particular substance are changing right the properties are altered but in this change, there is no new substance that is formed, right? I will explain this, but basically no new substance is being formed over here. Chemical change, on the other hand, when this change uh, happens, this is a change in the composition. It is a change in the chemical composition of the substance. And here, there is a completely new change that has happened over here, completely new product only that has been formed over here, right? So this is the second classification, right? Now, what we're going to do for today's lesson is we're going to go a little bit more into detail for physical changes. Today, we are not talking about chemical changes at all. Right? We are talking about only physical changes. Okay? Clear so far? 
Change is basically something that goes ahead and alters one or more properties of a substance. Change can be classified either in basically into two categories. We have based on reversibility where you have reversible and irreversible changes and then based on whether a new substance is formed or not. When there is no new substance form, we say it's a physical change. When there is a new substance form, we say it is a chemical change. So now in detail, let's go ahead and understand physical changes. So what exactly is a physical change? Well, let's define it because this is something that you could get as a question. What uh, define a physical change, right? So a process that alters the physical properties of a substance and does not involve the formation of any new substances, this is called a physical change. Matlab is change may there are no new products or no new substances being formed. For hot simple air, which means the the uh, what you started off with, you will get. You may you may get a change in the physical properties, but has that substance changed? Has the composition of that substance changed? This has not happened. So we'll still go ahead and discuss this in detail so you can understand it a little bit more. Okay, so for example, when you're talking about tearing of paper, right? Now tearing of paper, for example, you take the paper and you tear it. What are you doing? You're changing the physical property. What is the physical property over there? It's the size, right? Or the shape of the paper is changing over here. But when you tear that paper, which is a change definitely, uh, do, are you getting a new substance out of that? No. Paper is still paper only, right? So no new substance is formed over here. And this is why we say it's a physical change, right? Or for example, melting of ice. A melting of ice, kya hota hai? you've got ice. What is ice? Ice is basically water, right? Now, when you heat that water, that that when you heat that ice, sorry, that ice is changing from solid to liquid. But has the, what was it? Basically, that was water before also in the form of ice. And it is water in the form of a liquid also, right? So what is it? It's basically water. You're not getting a new substance over here. Clear? So physical change is when the physical properties of a substance are altered, but there is no new substance being formed over here. And this is very, very important to remember. Okay? Okay, now we've been talking about physical properties. Right. So let's go ahead and define what are the different kind of physical properties that we are talking about here. Physical properties ka matlab kya hai exactly. Right. So in terms of physical change, when we talk about the change in physical properties, what are the changes that can actually happen over here? So number one, you could have a change in state, which means uh, something is changing from say a solid to a liquid or maybe from a liquid to a gas, right? So that's basically the state of the substance. So the state is changing, so this could be a change of state. Or for example, you could have a change in size. Pele bada tha, fir wo chota ho gaya. This is change in size. Okay? Or for example, you have a change in shape, like when we spoke about the clay or we spoke about folding the paper. That paper basically has gone ahead and it's changed into a different shape. So again, shape is a physical property, right? And then we have, of course, color. Color is also a physical property over here. So when you talk about physical properties, basically you're talking about either a state or size or shape or color that is changing over here. Now, in a physical change, any of these properties could change. Yes, maybe one or more of these could change, but what is the key thing over here? There is no new substance that is being formed as a result of this change. And this is very, very important to remember. Okay, so what we'll do now is we'll go into each of these changes over here and take examples for these so that we understand this a little bit more clearly. Okay? Okay, chal. So let's talk about change of state. Ab ye to bahut common hai. I think we've already taken an example of this. The simplest would be basically if you're talking about the change of state of water, right? So for example, when we've got water, we are boiling water for our, you know, uh, for uh, just to heat it or for whatever purpose. What is happening? You boil that water. Now the water is basically evaporating. It's basically from water is becoming, okay, so water was a liquid. It starts from a liquid and it basically moves to water vapor right so what is happening over here this is a change in state but 
is this is there a new substance being formed over here no there is no new substance being formed over here but now the interesting thing when we're talking about physical changes over here is think about it we have said that water basically can be changed uh, in terms of um, state right so you've got liquid the liquid has changed to water vapor now tell me can that water vapor be changed back to liquid Yes, it can. It can be changed by the process of condensation. We've learned about this, right? So basically, we are saying that this particular change is uh, reversible, right? So which means a physical change can also be reversible over here. Next, let's talk about our next uh, physical property, which is change in size. Of change in size, what are we doing? We're changing the size. So, for example, you've got uh, you've got ice, right? Now, ice is basically melting. Okay, so it starts uh, as a big block of ice and then it changes its size, right? So, this is a change of size. Or, so for example, if you take an apple and you basically cut that apple over there, that apple basically is changing its size. So, this is again change of size. So, you could have change of size. Now, what sort of change is melting of uh, a melting of uh, ice it's a reversible change because again you can freeze it and it will become ice right but if you're cutting an apple an apple can you get back the apple again no that's an irreversible change so you see physical changes can be either reversible or irreversible then we talk about our next physical property which is change in shape now change in shape tack 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 you cut the paper right cutting of the paper you're cutting the paper into pieces okay uh, now what's a change like this is this re word reversible or irreversible it's irreversible but if for example you change it and you shape it into a boat can you get back that sort of change? Yes, you can. So that is irreversible. So again, a physical change can be reversible or irreversible. And then we move on to our last physical property, which is basically change in color. Let's talk about heating a metal rod. Now, when we have a metal rod, you heat it, it becomes a different color. But will the color change back? Yeah, it will change back. When it cools down, the color will change back. So again, this is a reversible change, right? So what have we gone ahead and understood for today? We basically said that in terms of a physical change, first thing to remember is that there is no new substance that is formed over here. Okay. Dusra is that a physical change could either be reversible or irreversible, right? Reversible or irreversible. Correct? Okay. Now, when we talk about the water cycle, we're talking about the change of state in water, right? So the interconversion of water or the states of water is a reversible change. So you can go from ice to water, water to water vapor. Then after that, for example, you're talking about water vapor. If you basically do condensation, you will get back water again and you will get back your ice again. So it keeps changing and this is in fact how our water cycle happens, right? Okay, with that, we now do a quick recap of what we have studied over here. We've basically spoken about changes. So changes is something that alters the physical properties of a substance, one or more properties of a substance, not physical properties, but alters. A change is something that alters one or more properties of a substance, right? And uh, basically changes can be classified, number one, on reversibility, where you have uh, reversible or irreversible changes. And then on the basis of a formation of a new substance, uh, of a new substance where you have physical change and chemical change, right? What did we talk about? We spoke about physical changes basically. Physical changes is where there is no new formation of substance and these are generally irreversible, could be irreversible also. So I'm putting this down for you over here. Irreversible also. Please remember that physical changes could be either reversible or irreversible. And what do we mean by physical properties? Change of shape, change of size, change of state, as well as change of color. Take care. Okay, with that, this is us finishing this particular concept. I'm going to see you really, really soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.